it looked like uh, after some encouraging developments against the Eagles, it looked like the offense took a step back this week. And I'm wondering, what do you think the reason was? You know, it's <clears throat> it's going to be a growth uh, week to week. You know, it's obviously the goal is to um, grow every week and um, make it as a, as much of an upper trajectory trajectory and a clean line as possible but um, everybody knows you know that's not how the real world goes you're gonna have your ups and your downs and um, you got to be able to manage um, you know how you attack each week and how you go about your business to make sure that those ups and downs are as minimal as is uh, they can be on the way to uh, you know a full um, upward trajectory so you know we just got to pick up um, where we left off after the Eagles game and um, keep trying to get better every week you know it's um, Every week, it's a new defense, new personnel, new scheme, um, new place for us. We just got to make sure that uh, um, we handle every little detail so that we can keep getting better every week. Miller, your answer about how Zach was handling stuff. We heard the, the very beginning of your answer, but it sounded like you went on longer. Yeah, he, you know, he's handling it well. Um, you know, no one's going to be perfect. So um, to be, you know, to have a long career and a successful career, to be able to handle you know, when everybody loves you and when everybody doesn't love you and, and just to take it and learn from whatever mistakes you have and just keep growing. And I think he does a great job of that. He doesn't let, you know, a down game um, or a down play, you know, get get to him. And that's the biggest thing. So you'll see some guys, you know, they might have a, um, you know, if they throw maybe a pick one time, they stop swinging, you know what I mean? And then they're, they're scared to do it. But Zach, he has the confidence to keep playing and that's how it's going to be, you know. Um, everybody <laughs> has their rough plays, have, has their rough games, especially in this league. And um, so he's handling it well. And, you know, he just continues every week to have confidence and, and go out and, and uh, not be afraid to, to take a little risk for that reward and, and uh, just give his best every play. Connor, when, when we talk to Sala in these press conferences, he, he often expresses a lot of confidence and optimism about the future of the organization and how he has a clear vision of how this is going to unfold and saying it's constantly, it's going to flip, it's going to flip. I'm wondering behind closed doors when he talks to you guys, does he address that subject and how so? Yeah, you know, he, he says the same things, you know, he, he says it. Um, and every team meeting, you know, that, it, that they, these tides will turn and it's just going to keep taking us um, to want to do that. You know, it, it's not just going to happen on its own. You can't just hope for it to happen. You have to go make it happen. Um, so every day we go out there with that mindset to, to change the organization, to change the narrative, to, um, you know, bring respect to the Jets and, and, uh, and make this a winning organization. And, you know, every guy in that locker room truly believes that and truly wants that, you know, um, this isn't a locker room of people just collecting paychecks and, and, and limping by, um, you know, I've, I've never seen a, a team come out every week, practice so hard with so much intent and uh, just be able to do it week in week, week out, no matter the record. Um, but the want to is there and the belief in the coaches is there. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 it's about, it's, it's going to, you know, it will flip. Everybody believes it. It's just, you know, when that day comes, we have to make sure we're all ready for it. And I think we are ready for it. And, and everybody's willing to do whatever it takes takes to uh, make that happen. Connor, how important is it for guys like you, veteran guys on the team, to show the young guys, especially at a time like this, you know, you guys were official and eliminated yesterday, that you got to keep working and keep getting better. How important is it for, for the veterans to show that? It's extremely important, you know, whether you're doing it because you want to change the culture of the team or you want to continue your career in in football or whatever, you know, you kind of get in this situation. Some people are like, oh, you know, you should probably protect yourself. Well, if you go protect yourself, you're not going to have a job next year. So that's um, not how that works. You know, you it, this is a what have you done for me lately league. So whether you are doing this um, to go out every week and give your best because um, for the name on the front or the back of your jersey, you know, either one, you giving your best is going to help help the New York Jets. Um, so whatever it takes for you to stay motivated and for you to go out and, and give your best every play, um, whether you're thinking about changing the culture, if you're doing it for, you know, your livelihood, feeding your family, um, that, that's just what you have to go do every day. Uh, and so if you have that attitude and 
um, you know, that, that, that's how you change the culture. It's how you keep winning games. It's how you get better. Um, but the moment you think you can take, you know, your foot off the gas, um, specifically in solace terms, that's the moment, you know, you start losing your job. That's the moment that, um, you know, everything you've worked for up to this point uh, starts to go away. So, um, you know, there's definitely nobody trying to coast, nobody trying to take it easy for next year. Nobody uh, going to save themselves because the moment you save yourself, um, you end up saving yourself for nothing. So you lose your job. So um, it, it's something that, you know, every veteran that's been around the league for a while knows. Um, and it's something that, you know, you, we won't even really have to preach because the young guys will just see it um, that we, you know, the veterans keep bringing it day in and day out to, to get better for ourselves, for the team and, and uh, just keep growing as a player. Connor, when you guys played the Dolphins a month ago, uh, they started Flacco in that game. And one of the reasons that Salah cited and, and the other, and LaFleur was, you know, how tough their blitzes are to, to read. And, you know, they disguise a lot of stuff. They do a lot of zeros. Now Zach's going to face that this week, I assume. And, you know, how is there some way you can help him through that and, and help him re read what they're doing on Miami and kind of the complexity of it? Yeah, you know, it'll come down to um, ultimately how the coaches decide to pick all that kind of stuff up. Um, you know, it, it's the way, you know, <clears throat> the way it works is you have your play. The coaches go in with how those your the base rules apply to that defense. Um, and then, you know, that's where it, that between those rules is what gives us a little freedom to, um, you know, pick different things up and maybe try to make a check here or there. Um, so, yeah, when when the coaches do give us that opportunity to check and, and try to, um, you know, uh, either get us into a better play or help them throw hot or whatever it is, um, then I'll be able to help with that. So it, it'll it all comes down to, you know, ultimately how the coaches want to how the coaches see us being put in the best situation to, um, you know, defeat those blitzes, whether that's Zach throwing hot or us changing the protection. Um, and, you know, if it's the latter of those, I, can, I will definitely be there to, to, every, to do everything I can to, uh, to make sure we are in the best play possible to keep Zach upright. And, you know, as an offensive line, we take great pride in that. And um, for the most part, we, I, I feel we've been doing a pretty good job of that um, throughout this year and, and doing everything we can to uh, make his job as easy as possible. And, um, you know, any, anything the coaches ask uh, me to do on my part and, and definitely a game like this, it's, it's when it does uh, – a lot of that does fall on me. I'll be there to, to, to definitely make sure we do it every, everything I can and we can to, to keep him upright. Kyle, I know your first year here didn't go the way you, you wanted to team-wise, and also you were dealing with that the hamstring injury. How, how have you felt like you've played this year personally? Uh, I've gotten better. You know, I think I've had a much better year than last year, and I, I honestly think this is probably – um, overall, um, my best year, I think I've had some of my best games, um, this year, you know, like I was saying a lot and kind of, um, you know, put my chips all in. I do feel like I fit, fit this game pretty well. Um, you know, obviously I have yet to play perfect and I, and I have a lot of improving to do, but, um, for me personally, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting better every week and, and, uh, you know, I really see that I, I fit this game well and, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not, uh, um, you know, think I played perfect or I'm not, I'm not, um, you know, I'm never going to be satisfied with how I play. But, um, you know, I think I've um, improved over last year, which is always the goal and improving week in and week out. You know, I'm definitely, we were saying that obviously I'm, I'm definitely not satisfied. I don't think I have this thing, this thing figured out by any means, but um, you know, like the trajectory I talked about earlier, I think I've, you know, um, done what I can to get that going. And I'm going to keep doing everything I can to, to keep that going upward, um, you know, every day. So. Are there any more questions for Connor? Connor, you talked about the buy-in and, and the belief that, that this thing will turn around. Does that get tougher kind of late in the season when the, when the results aren't necessarily, or the tangible results aren't necessarily there? Uh, no, I think that kind of goes back with, you know, when you're trying to change a culture, that's not going to happen overnight. When you're trying to change, um, you know, the narrative behind a whole entire organization, that's not going to happen overnight. Um, you know, I was actually um, had my hand in 
when San Francisco flipped it, you know, we were, I was at, in Denver, we had just rushed for like, I don't know, almost 300 yards on Cincy. We were going into San Francisco. Um, it was kind of a late season push to try to make the playoffs. We were going to San Francisco. They really hadn't won any games that year. Um, we thought we were going to go rush for, put up another 300 yards rushing or something. Um, San Francisco went and uh, they beat us really bad. I mean, I think Kittle had three, 250 yards receiving in the first half. And then that started their, you know, whatever it was, five or six game win streak at the end of that season, which, uh, you know, um, shot them into a, a fantastic year um, and a Super Bowl run. So, um, you know, I've, I was, I, I watched that happen in San Fran and I fully believe we can do the same thing here. It just, it's just going to take that, um, you know, that, that turn. And, and uh, once those tides switch, you know, they can switch fast and switch strong. Um, you know, I think after every game, after the games we've won this year, I've always like, okay, here it is. This is, this is when it's going. And, um, you know, maybe we, you know, stress a little bit too much and, and get a little too uncut, like, you know, get a little too tight after we win to try to make that happen or, or um, not tight enough. Not sure what that is right now, but, um, you know, it, I truly believe those tides are going to turn and, um, you know, Saul has been a part of, I think he said three or four or five teams that have switched that and, and started being winning programs. So, um, you know, I, I still see it. I want it um, really bad. You know, I would love nothing more than to have my hand in, in, a, in a change like that and, and take pride in 10, 15, 20 years and look back and the Jets are winning a lot of football games and, and be proud to say that, you know, I, I took the lumps and the bumps and the bruises and, and gave my all to, to help that organization uh, switch. And, and, and it is what it is then. So, um, you know, I think I see that every day. I think the locker room sees it every day and the coaches see that every day. Hey, Connor, Connor? I think you played with uh, Demarius Thomas for three seasons in Denver. Do you have any particular memories of Demarius and, you know, just from your playing days and maybe, some meeting room things or, you know, just kind of thoughts on him. <laughs> yeah, I do. You know, um, my, my mom had asked me that, and, you know, she was like, Hey, you know, you played with Demarius is, was he really that great of a guy as everybody says he is. I'm like, mom, he was the best. Like when you talk about um, a guy that, you know, <laughs> um, you, you wouldn't, you know, when you get to the NFL, you're a rookie, and all your friends are like, oh, what's the NFL like? Like, are people as crazy? You know, you hear the crazy stories. You never hear – not you don't always hear the good stories. So, never – I remember as a rookie, and everybody like, oh, what's – I'm like, man, you know, like, you got guys like DT who, who you know, in my eyes is a superstar. And and uh, me being me, I was the first day of a rookie. I, like, showed up way too early because um, I didn't know what to do. So, I just went to the facilities. And I'm sitting in my locker. The only rookie in the building. We weren't supposed to show up till like, I don't know, 3.30 or something. I was there at, like, 10 a.m. And uh, just sitting there, not knowing what to do. And, and DT got out of meetings and <clears throat> it was just me in the locker room. And he walks over, he's like, what's your name? I was like, Connor McGovern. He's like, Demarius Thomas. And, you know, my eyes were the size of dinner plates uh, meeting DT. And, uh, you know, he just talked to me. He's like, hey, you know, if you need anything, let me know. And he's, he's the type of guy, there's not a ton of stories. You know, he, he and I would always sit next to each other at a old line dinner and talk about cars. He's a big car guy. Um, and I love cars and, and uh, back then I wasn't really able to afford any of them. So I got to hear, you know, kind of live vicariously through him on, on, you know, his, he had this beautiful um, resto mod Chevelle. It was gunmetal. I'll never forget the time I saw first time I saw it in the parking lot. And I was sitting there just, you know, gawking over it, and he walks up and, you know, he started up, he let me see it, he would take a ride in it. I um, you know, I have a, I have a million stories <laughs> um, about DT and, and the type of guy he was and, and the player he was, and, and more importantly, the person, um, you know, it, it's, you're never going to forget that, you know, you meet him once, you're never going to forget that smile. Um, and you're never going to forget the way he treated you. So, um, yeah, I remember <clears throat> Thursday morning, I woke up to some text messages from, from, you know, former teammates at the Broncos was like, Hey, you know, I'm sure you're just waking up and, and you're seeing this too, you know, a DT pass last night and um, had some phone calls with some, some other teammates to talk about it and stuff. Cause um, you know, he's, he's the type of guy, you know, you never forget. And, and one, you always hope to see around, um, you know, whether it's, it's whatever team he's on playing. I remember when I signed here, 
I text him, I was like, hey, DT, are you still on the Jets? Like, are they, he's like, ah, I'm not sure. They were talking about it now. If they're going to pick it up, I was like, well, man, I hope you are. We were talking about what, like, I was like, hey, like, what car should I bring? Like, we can go cruise and stuff. And um, so, I, you know, I was unfortunate they didn't bring him back that year because I was really looking forward to playing um, on the same team as him again. And um, I'd see him around Denver um, that last offseason driving and we kind of lived by each other. And and I'd pull up next to each other, roll the window down, have a conversation at the stoplight. Um, and uh, so, yeah, you know, he'll, he's, a, he's a phenomenal person that will definitely be missed.